Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of the Range Report on the road in southern New South Wales in the beautiful town of Holbrook. Bit of history there with a submarine, worth visiting just to find out all about that. But we're in Holbrook to visit Potter Firearms. The proprietor, Bruce Quick, he's an Olympian, he's a multiple gold medalist at Commonwealth Games, and he supplies a lot of equipment to the IWSF Pistol Australia community. So sit back and let's find out all about Potter Firearms. So we continue our range report on the road and we're here today in Holbrook with Olympian Bruce Quick and Potter Firearms to have a chat about your business and, and how you support the pistol community. Welcome. Yeah, great little town. Uh, obviously the bypass has not killed it. It's uh, pretty vibrant. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's quite a pleasant little uh, village now. Yeah, once the freeway bypassed, uh, it's much quieter. But still, yeah, very pleasant. And Potter Firearms, based here in a small town, you obviously sell nationally, any international business? Uh, only a very small amount of international, but uh, we sell wholesale and we support shooters in all states. Um, obviously a, a sale interstate has to go from one dealer to another dealer, but that happens all the time and I get many inquiries from Queensland, South Australia, WA, all over the country. Yeah. We, uh, we try to stock the best of the best and the brands that we uh, support, support us, and they're the, the top brands that shooters want when they're competing at a high level. So Potter Firearms, you mainly specialise in IWSF uh, firearms? Yes, we do. Uh, the Anschutz target rifle range is, um, is mostly IWSF, and there's some, uh, some of the metallic silhouette shooting, uh, but uh, generally IWSF is, is our little niche in the market. Yes, yeah, so you're doing both pistol and rifle. Pistol, rifle, uh, things like Biathlon, uh, we're the importer and sole distributor of Anschutz Biathlon rifles and associated equipment. So I get to head up to the snow to see the Olympic Biathlon team from time to time and uh, talk to them and um, we work out what equipment they need and uh, facilitate the importation and distribution of it. Yes, yeah, so people who don't know what Biathlon is in, in winter Olympic sport, yeah. you're, you're skiing on your cross country skis, you're going around a course at pace, so you've got adrenaline, you've got heart rate, yeah. and then you've got to slow down, get down, and you've got to uh, squeeze off five shots right on the target, otherwise you get a time penalty. Very difficult, very difficult. It requires a lot of, uh, a lot of technical skill in the shooting side and a lot of, lot of aerobic fitness. I was talking to one of the uh, top biathlon coaches and they said, don't send me good shooters, send me good skiers, I'll teach them how to shoot. So the skiing is the very important part and the technical side of shooting uh, it comes secondary, but um, it, it goes together. Your, your best skier won't necessarily win and your best shooter won't necessarily win. It's a combination of the fitness and yeah, the ability to control your heart rate. I'm not a, I've never done it. I, I can't ski to save my life. But the shooting side of it, it's quite enjoyable. Folks, next time the Winter Olympics on, go and watch the biathlon because everything is a consequence. How fast you ski, how accurate you are, when you get down, when you fire off the shots, if you get the time penalty, everything's a consequence. In Europe, they have a World Cup uh, series of uh, half a dozen events in different countries. They'll have thousands of spectators in the stands watching them come in uh, off the track, uh, lay down, shoot, stand and shoot. I was in Europe and uh, we were watching this on, on one of the pay TV channels and I was with the Anschutz people and I said, oh, um, they've got an Audi uh, four wheel drive parked there right near the range. That's a, uh, an advertising thing. And they said, no, that's the prize. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so the winner of this particular biathlon event was gonna drive away in an Audi four wheel drive. 
Well, you do donate some prizes to our national yeah. championships. You're not giving away an Audi, but you have got a prize you're going to give away? Yes, uh, sadly, uh, we're not up to that yet, the Audi, but um, uh, the prize for standard pistol at the 2020 national championships that have been cancelled was going to be a brand new FAS 6007 standard sport pistol. Um, that's going to carry over to 2021. I've had discussions with Michelle Sandstrom and the good people at Brisbane International and, and we'll put, it, put that up as a prize when the Nationals finally take place next year. Um, we're also very proud to sponsor Daniel Repicoli. Uh, Daniel, via the kindness of Marini, um, is going to be taking a brand new Marini CM200EI, the latest and greatest Marini air pistol, to the Olympics in Tokyo next year when they, when they come about. And through the generosity of Marini and the support of Potter Firearms, Daniel will have the latest and greatest. Now that's a beautiful piece of equipment and uh, obviously you thank them for sponsoring Daniel oh, and, yes. and we wish Daniel the best on his journey to his fifth Olympics. Yeah, uh, that's uh, five Olympics is, uh, that's very creditable. That's amazing in any sport. Um, in shooting, we have a longer life than uh, most uh, sports, but five Olympic games, I take my hat off, that is uh, a great achievement, no, no question about that. So you've been to an Olympic Games as a competitor. The journey to get there, it, it's not easy. I mean, you have to be the best of the best. It's, it's, it's a very difficult sport. Yes, um, the, the planning that goes into Olympic selection, uh, four years is kind of just about right. A little bit longer is better, but um, uh, seeing some adverts on the TV for the Olympics coming up in 12 months time is way too short a time frame in shooting to say, oh, I want to go to the Olympics. You probably left it too late. Everybody else is already out of the starting blocks. Um, probably 10 years development before you maybe get to that level? Yeah. Unless you're exceptional? Um, uh, most, um, most shooters in Australia, anyway, that I know who've got to master's grade level and in international representation did it very quickly. You tend not to hang around for 10 years and then all of a sudden pop up in a Commonwealth Games or Olympic team. If you're that good, you're going to know that you're good within the first few years. Um, but being a good shooter and knowing that you're a good shooter and going to that extra level to Commonwealth Games or Olympic selection is quite difficult. Um, the amount of work you need to do to get to, say, master's grade is about the same as the amount of work you need to do to get to that extra step. Um, it becomes exponentially difficult and it's about time management and your family and your job and, and a whole lot of other things and your will and your desire and to get out there and train. So yeah, it's complicated but everybody has a different pathway um, to, get to, the, to get to that goal. Uh, there's no tried and true method. Everybody needs to work out their own path and um, how they motivate themselves. You've got some laser trainers here. You've also got uh, a new electronic target which can be used for uh, air pistol. Yeah. It can be used for yeah. sport pistol. You can yeah, fire pellets at it. The Sport Quantum. Uh, it's a French design product. It's brand new. Um, it's, it, you fire live pellets. You fire a, an air pistol and pellets hit the screen. It's basically a, a computer monitor with a sensitive polycarbonate plate that will tell you whether you shoot a 10 or a 9 or a 10.7 or whatever um, with the same accuracy as the Maton or the Swiss Ascor systems. Uh, they're all very accurate, no question about that. The difference with the Sport Quantum system is that it has, you use a tablet, there is, a, it's completely wireless, there's no wire, wire connection between you and the target, and there are, it runs off an app off a tablet. So you can call up an air pistol target, an air rifle target, or uh, a series of games. You can bring up a, uh, a sport pistol rapid fire target, which will face you for seven, three seconds and turn away for seven. So you can practice sport pistol, you can do all manner of training games, um, and it's all portable. Hangs on a bracket on the wall, you take it off, put it back in its box and drive it to another range, it sets up in 10 minutes. Very simple. Yeah, it's, a, it's a quite an easy way, I guess, to take electronic targets to different ranges where they, but shooters may not have experienced those. Obviously, when they go to Brisbane next year for the Nationals, they have the targets, the, the electronic targets, which are legacy from the Commonwealth Games. Yeah. And, and it's a great range. Brisbane is... Uh, 
the premier range in Australia uh, equal to any in the world and uh, they've done a fantastic job. The electronic targets there are of the highest standard. But you can't unbolt them and drive them to Bundaberg or um, Rockhampton or something and run a, a championships. The uh, sport quantum targets are very simple to transport, plug in and get going in in a very short amount of time. And I think that's where their niche will be in the market, that, that ranges that previously haven't been able to hold large championships can run uh, electronic target final series uh, quite easily. And of course, they then would network together and, and, and the match referee can see the screens and see all the, all the combined scores where the athlete would just see the one score, Yes, but they can see the combined. Correct. Uh, so in terms of running a match, yeah, uh, networking is very simple these days, wireless networking. A range official would have control over all targets and see the results as they came up to make sure that everything was happening correctly. Um, but in a one-on-one -on -one sense, a, a shooter could be training at their range or at, a, at an approved facility, um, storing their training results on the tablet and immediately emailing that to their coach. Uh, it is even possible for the shooter and the coach to log into the server uh, in France and in, in a live training session, the uh, coach can see what the shooter's doing in terms of where the pellets are hitting the target and what they're scoring and, and going through their training regimes. If you combine that with a Zoom or a Skype session, you could, you could have a virtual training session. So if I was a pistol coach and I had athletes around the country, Australia's a big country, it's hard to get them all together, I could conceivably be sitting here in Holbrook mm. and having a discussion and watching the training of an athlete in Perth or Adelaide or Northern Territory or down in Tasmania or anywhere in the country. You certainly can. And um, you know, an athlete might be told by the coach, I want you to do three two-hour sessions between now and the uh, end of next week or whatever, and they can sh do their sessions and shoot their shots and have their paper targets sitting there, but the coach well, can't actually see what happened and, and, and they're not there live. With the uh, Sport Quantum Electronic Target, it's possible to be there live and see what's happening. Yeah, no pulling the wool over the coach's eyes anymore. You've got to do the time because he's watching online. That's right. Yes, yes. And other things you're doing here, grips, I, I saw out in the shop there, and, and we'll have a look at those, is uh, a range of, of different grips, either uh, handmade or machine made. Yeah, grips are very important uh, for pistol shooters to get the right fit. So we always have more grips than we need, um, various sizes from extra, extra small to extra, extra large. And um, if I sell a, a, an air pistol to somebody and um, the grip's not right, it's, it's an easy swap out. It's an easy What would you do for me? Like, I, I, I come to you, I've got a reasonably large hand, long fingers. You, you'd measure that up and what Yeah, happens? well, we'd measure the width, the length of your longest and your shortest finger, um, the distance, distances and the biometrics of your hand. So a shooter with a, with a hand um, with, with this width but long fingers, you don't want a grip that's just bigger because um, you've, got to, you've got to hold it. So you need the right width to compensate for the, the right length. And obviously, uh, for me, on a trigger, I don't want my finger coming all the way around no. too far onto the trigger. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So, so grip making um, is, is an art in itself. I don't make them, but we uh, liaise with people who do. I mean, the best group, one of the best grip makers in the world in Australia is uh, Sergei Glebsky Sr. Um, and he's a fantastic artisan, will make uh, grips for all sorts of guns, for all sorts of people, and does a fantastic job. Not everybody has the ability to, to front up in Melbourne and there's time and uh, cost involved. We can, do a, we can do a pretty good job for most of our shooters. I don't want to sell a gun to somebody and have them holding it thinking, oh, it just doesn't feel right, because the gun has to feel right for you to shoot well. And um, yeah, I want everybody who purchases a gun from Potter Firearms to know that they've, they've got the best equipment they can walk away with and the grip's suitable for them. Yeah, so for the new shooters out there, there's no excuse to have an uncomfortable grip. You can easily get one that they're yeah. not too expensive. Get one made for your hand and your size and shape of your hand yeah. and you'll have a much more fun journey or, or a much more successful journey down the road as a pistol shooter. Yes, you don't want to learn bad habits holding a grip that's too big or too small 
and uh, try to learn the technical aspects of shooting, you need a grip that fits right and then embark on your journey to become a better shooter. Okay, you've been to the Olympics. Three tips. I'm new to it. What am I going to do? <laughs> uh, what, Four tips. What, what, what to tips? get to the Olympics or just to be a better shooter? No, just to start me off. Okay. Um, pick up the gun and hold it reasonably still. Line up the sights. And then third and most importantly, operate the trigger without disturbing the sights. That's Work on those three things. Come back and see me in a couple of years. So the various different brands and manufacturers guns that you provide here in Australia, take us through some of them and what they're used for. Yeah, well, as I mentioned uh, before, we've, we represent Marini. Marini uh, make the finest uh, 50 metre pistol in the world. It's the gold standard. Um, it's the, the definition of 50 metre pistol. The, C, the Marini CM84E, brilliant gun. Um, the Ferrari of 50 metre? Absolutely. Uh, at the Olympic Games, it'll be wall-to-wall -wall Marinis. Maybe the Russians will shoot uh, some Russian guns, but the rest, of the, the rest of the world, the rest of the countries, will shoot um, Marini, the Marini CM84, a beautiful gun. Uh, they have the Marini CM22 for sport pistol, standard pistol, and as we discussed, the air pistols, they were the first uh, compressed air air pistols, the first electronic trigger. Marini have really led the way in the development of the technical side of air pistol shooting. Um, as well as we represent Steyr. Steyr uh, make uh, a very good range of air pistols. Um, generally, uh, champions, high level shooters, are, prefer a Marini or a Steyr. They are both very, very high quality pieces of equipment. Some guns suit some people and some guns suit other people and uh, I guess what we offer is a choice. Um, the uh, FAS range of pistols, they were a, a very prominent brand in the 1990s. They went into the doldrums for a while. They've recently re reproduced the FAS 6007. Lovely sport standard pistol. That's the one that's going to be the prize for standard pistol at the Nationals. A very well balanced gun and uh, the gun still holds the national standard pistol record set back in 1989, I believe. So who's got that record? Well, uh, I do. Great. Congratulations. So uh, that's a, it's, a, it's a great gun. Um, I'm sure they'll sell well and that's uh, part of the promotion is to provide one for the winner of the standard pistol match. And, and hopefully then maybe the winner of that can go on and set a new national record when they use it. Let's hope they do. And you'd be the first one there to shake their hand and congratulate them. Absolutely. Jump up, be the first one to shake their hand. It'd be a good thing to see. Um, the other brands that we, uh, we represent, uh, we represent Champion Shooting Glasses, uh, the finest shooting glasses, Swiss made. Um, if you buy a set of Champion Glasses, you don't buy a second pair. They'll see you right through your shooting career. We, uh, our, um, our philosophy is to try and represent the best quality products for the shooting movement. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully we've, we, we uh, fulfill that. Well, Bruce Quick, Pot of Firearms, thanks for inviting the, the Range Report it's into your home and have a chat about what you're doing. No, it's an absolute pleasure. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs>
But uh, yeah, that was uh, that was a pleasure to see that. It was interesting. And Noel, what about Bruce's knowledge around IWSF, the air pistols, the 25 meter pistols, the 50 meter pistols, all the equipment that goes to providing those people to compete? I mean, he's just an encyclopedia. Oh, it was fantastic. Uh, you could ask anything, and he knew it. It was. Uh, Really good. His his uh, love of the sport and his depth of knowledge is just amazing. It was a pleasure just to sit and listen to him talking. Uh, it was fantastic. So now moving on, we've gone through the first round of the quiz show. We're now up to our elimination finals and our qualifying finals. Let's have a look where the teams sit and who can progress. So first up, uh, we're going to have a double header next week. It's Queensland WA elimination, New South Wales Victoria elimination. A couple of big states are going to go out there. Yeah, it's uh, it's sudden death now. It's uh, it's the bottom four of the uh, finals and uh, the losers. Um, it's goodbye, as they say in hard quiz. Please leave. Out. <laughs> yeah. So at least our winners out of the elimination finals. Someone's going to progress either Queensland or WA out of their elimination. New South Wales or Victoria out of their elimination, and they will play the losers of our qualifying final, which are NT taking on South Australia. They will play. Uh, the winner of the Queensland WA game and Tasmania ACT will play the loser out of that will play the winner out of New South Wales Victoria with the winners of those qualifying rounds going straight through to the semi-finals. Yeah, it's interesting that the, uh, the three smallest states and territories uh, are in the top four along with South Australia. Um, so our biggest states um, really are in the bottom four. So as you said, two of our biggest states will, will be out next week and um, uh, two will move on. Yeah, one of, one of the big benefits, and we've had some feedback here, Noel, is people are learning about other parts of pistol that they don't compete in. It's a general knowledge quiz. There is uh, is some general knowledge questions around past Olympians, Olympic uh, medalists, and obviously Commonwealth Games gold medalists came up on the show the other day. Yeah, all the feedback we're getting is uh, how much people are learning. Um, a couple of the emails I got last week from people were saying that they learned more watching the show than they'd learned in 30, 40 years of being in pistol shooting. And I suppose that's, that's that's appropriate, really, because if there are action pistol shooter, for example, they may never go to a WA 1500 match, um, and vice versa, and the same with all the other disciplines. So they're learning a little bit about everything, really, which is which is good. So Noel, while isolation and social distancing is being eased around the country, obviously Victoria's had a spike at the moment, and that uh, maybe puts hold on some of the plans of get, about getting national events going. We've just got to get through that trouble zone at the moment in Victoria and just hope they get through safely. Yeah, it's going to be difficult to do anything really until all the borders open. Um, you know, our thoughts are with the people in Victoria, it's a pretty tough situation, especially in Melbourne. Um, but it's just as tough for the regional people who, where there isn't any virus at the moment apparently, and, and they're still, they're stuck as well. But clearly the people running the country have a very difficult job. Like you wouldn't be a state premier or a prime minister at the moment, would you? It's um, they're making life and death decisions, no matter what they decide to do, and they're basing it on scientific evidence. So it, it's a very tough situation. Um, we're blessed here in the ACT. We've really had virtually nothing. Um, people followed the rules pretty early, and uh, things have worked out well. We're a small population, of course. But Victoria uh, is important. Australia can't come out of a recession without Victoria. It needs it. Uh, when 5 million people are locked down, that's pretty serious. So. Um, yeah, we, we need to get that fixed and uh, let's hope that six weeks we'll get it fixed and we can get back to uh, some sort of normality. I'm not sure what that's going to be from now on, but anyway. Yeah, obviously extraordinary measures. New South Wales and Victoria have closed the border uh, in the last 24 hours. The army's mobilised, the police have come and they've shut off all the roads and you need permits to come through. There's pretty heavy fines and jail terms if you try to get across that border. Obviously, we're thinking about Mark and Sherry Blake there who live on the Redonga side and they need to travel, obviously, across to New South Wales occasionally for work. So uh, they'll get permits. But uh, for anyone affected by it, please stay safe. Uh, you know, seek help if you, if you need it. Um, make some phone calls, talk to your friends and uh, and try and you know keep the chin up and, and let's get back to normal as soon as we possibly can. If you like what we're showing you here, follow us on social media, share and like. And join us in future weeks. Of course, double head on the rain show elimination finals coming up next week. Queensland WA, New South Wales, Victoria in the quiz show. I'm Mike on behalf of the team here at the Range Report signing off and we'll see you soon.